Hey folks, so we are going to cover rendering in Octane in Houdini using this particle sim that I have set up to kind of get an introduction to that. So if you're interested in seeing how I set this up, the video for that is on my Patreon, but I wanted to make this section available to everybody because there is not a great deal of Octane for Houdini content out there for free for people to learn from. So I wanted to make something that would hopefully be helpful to people trying to learn Octane and Houdini. So without further ado, let's get started. So we have this particle set up that I've created and what we are ultimately trying to turn this into is this guy here and we're going to get there. Okay. So Octane is a little bit weird if you haven't worked with it or set it up yet in Houdini. So the first thing that I'm going to do is change my workspace to quad, which just allows me to have more windows to work with. I'm also just going to change this back to dark because I want to work with that for now. I can turn that off. I can turn my camera view mask opacity back to one so that I only see the camera view. And then so for Octane, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the out. We're going to create an Octane custom node. And you can see that it is referring to our camera one for by default for the render and IPR camera, which in this case is fine. If you're using a camera other than camera one, you're going to need to change this here. But let's also go to the material network. So the other thing that we need to make sure we do is create a Octane render target. So this is a thing that I think can trip people up because if you use Redshift, you don't have to do this step. But this Octane ROP is looking for a render target and it's it's outlining what it's called. And so if you create this by default, it is assigned to the render target the ROP is looking for. Again, if this changes or you change the name of this, you're going to have to manually, you know, drag this in here so that it is linked correctly. But this is your source for Octane render settings. So these are, if you've used Octane in let's say Cinema 4D or something, these are all the familiar kernel controls and everything that you should be used to. If you're using Octane for the first time and it's in Houdini, then this is where you control a lot of the Octane render settings. So the kernel here, which you're usually probably going to be using path tracing and adjusting the you know sample count to whatever you want and adjusting all these settings to your liking. So this is where you'll find most of the settings to play with for how Octane is operating. So after that is set up, you can also adjust your environment here. So this is where you would set up the backplate. You have these options here. You can also change the environment itself. So this is where it's looking for the environment. Let, let's fire up the IPR here just by clicking open IPR on this Octane ROP. One element that I may have overlooked in this case was the Octane object tab on this geometry node at the object level. I want to click on packed geo instancing because these are packed instances here and otherwise it's going to take up a lot of memory and I'm thinking that might be why Octane did not want to start up. Yeah. I think that I was right. So, let's see. That's what we have so far, which is fine. It's out of focus, so let's hop back into our render target here and let's go into camera. We want to do universal set turn off autofocus and then we can set the focus here wherever we want it in our scene and then let's see about this environment. So black backplate solid Let's go to the backplate tab. Let's go to black for now. We could also do a gradient linear. Play with doing that. Really easy way to get gradients in render, you know, if you were wanted to do that as opposed to adding them in compositing. But for now, let's just do a black solid. That's going to be the look we're going for. There is a default lighting setup in the Houdini version of Octane. Yeah, Houdini specific here. And it sets up a default lighting scenario with several different lights around and you know you can play with this but again like this is only meant for previewing purposes I think unless I don't I mean I haven't really played with it maybe you could just use that as a rendering setup I haven't 
tested it enough to know. But let's create a material context and create an octane material builder and then just drag that onto our, well, whatever. Let's just control copy and go into the render and paste it there. And let's set this here to full scene reload mode just in case. Sometimes it misses certain updates. If you, let's say you're jumping around frame to frame, if you don't have this enabled, sometimes it misses updating certain aspects. And again, in the ROP, the out ROP, I would also recommend setting the rendering mode to full scene reload before you render out your sequences or images or whatever. Back in the material context, we can, instead of preview, change this to texture. We got to give it a texture to use. So in this case, I have a grayscale gorilla one that I can use here. You can transform it as well. And then we can go back to our material context, start changing things here. So Octane allows you to use attributes from your geometry, and it's it seems fairly straightforward. You indicate which attributes you'd like here, and then in the material, you grab a color or float vertex attribute. D ignore that it says vertex, it can read point attributes too. It just is, it says that for whatever reason, but it can read point attributes and you have to declare them here. With instances, it's a little bit more confusing. And so this is something I had to figure out and it took me a while because I use instances a lot and I also use the color attribute on those instances a lot too. So it's something that I needed to figure out and took me a while because I haven't used Octane a ton in Houdini. So in our particle sim, we definitely do have a color attribute that we were using. You can see there's random colors on these, but we need to access those. So the way that we do that is by adding a custom attribute on instance, point attribute CD, and then we need to assign it to. So it's like you might be thinking, if you're just opening this up, where do I assign it to or whatever? But if you hover over this, it tells you this node must be a texture instance color node. So we go into the material, our octane material, and our instance texture instance color. We're going to grab that here, and then we will pipe that into the base color so we can see if it's working. And then we need to remember to go back and assign it to now that it senses that there is one in the material context, it will highlight it in this drop down. So then we click on it and let's see if we can get it working. Cool. So now you can see our color attribute is coming through on instance geometry, which is great. But one issue that I have not been able to resolve yet is how to use the ID point attribute to drive the color. When I use ID attribute, it goes pure black, even though these points definitely do have an ID attribute. Yeah, I still haven't been able to get the ID point attribute to work. So that's something that if anybody knows how to make that work, please let me know because I, yeah, still don't know. But for this particular case, it, it doesn't matter. But if we had a changing point count, we would really need that to be working so that we could apply consistent color attributes to that. So if I figure it out, I will try to include that somewhere in the notes or something. But otherwise, if anyone knows, please leave a comment so that we can all learn from that. All right, so now we have that color attribute accessible at the shader level. We can use that as a input for a gradient let's say from black to like a gold color. Cool. And if we wanted to instead, we could use a uh, material mixer and another standard surface and instead use the, the gradient to blend between these two. And so we could set up different materials. So if we wanted these to be able to, if we wanted the ability to give these, you know, different, um, different attributes on the material level. Like if we wanted some of them to glow or whatever else we could do. In this case, I don't think we need that, but we can leave it as it is. 
Just going to turn on metalness fully for both of these. And then again, adjust this color a little bit here. Cool. Another critical part of working in any render engine is being able to set up lights. So let's use the Octane Light or Octane Spectron Light. We can look through lights in Houdini. So let's do that. All right. Set this up here. You can see we're getting some highlights from that light. And then if we go to the light or emission material, we can change the settings. Probably want something emitting a little bit more light like this. And then in the, we can adjust the power as well or the color. And then in the material context, again, let's go back to the render target and go into the imager to play with all our standard octane tools. I tend to use ACES tone mapping, but because it gives, you know, more flexibility, I think over the distribution of highlight values and I think some richer colors too. So I tend to use that. You can turn on denoising if you use that. Upsampling as well. Um, you can add in some saturation here. There's also the post-processing tab. So glare and bloom are going to give us some nice shiny highlights here. You can also add in some of the other post effects if you are so inclined. And you can add fog too in the post effects here if you're not familiar with Octane. but think we're not going to do that for this particular situation. AOVs, you can see one at least noise is on by default. We also probably want to turn on post-processing if we want that AOV. If you turn that on, you won't be able to see the post effects in the render view because it will create an AOV for post-processing specifically. All right, cool. So that is most of the setup for the render it's i also set up the camera to have some depth of field animation so you know over let's say over the course of 200 frames we could set up an animation for the focal length of the camera or not the focal length the focus distance so on the sampling tab right so if we click to focus and we want to grab let's something here maybe even can we grab something farther back there yeah like grab something back here make a keyframe go forward you know to 200 frames or so and then set a new focal focal length keyframe here go into the animation editor for something like this i would tend to use linear interpolation and then if you want to, you could also set up a camera animation. So a simple way to do camera animations is to set up a null. And if you've already set up a camera view, you can just move the null to just about the center of that camera view. And then go to your camera, constraints, look at, select your null, press enter, press enter. And then it's going to be looking at this. So now we could go and add keyframes as well, and it's going to have a nice little target for us to do that. So that's how I would set up the animation too. That is pretty much everything in terms of setting up this render that we just created and getting Octane ready to go for Houdini. Things to be aware of in the ROP is the full scene reload. I have had better experiences leaving this on than not. You got to change it to frame range if you want to re render multiple frames. These default settings should be fine if you are rendering to EXR. I have had issues rendering to JPEG or PNG trying to use ACES tone mapping, but with EXR, things seem to be work working pretty well. Color management is its own beast entirely, so I'm not going to try to cover that here but in general i would say usually the defaults are fine if you're running into an issue you can try engaging the force tone mapping and changing the color space but really you know i would say only do those things if you know what you're doing but otherwise you should be you know good to go with that so 
I think that provides a pretty good introduction to how you can just set up Octane for rendering. And if you're interested in seeing how the particle system was set up, please head over to Patreon and you can look at the tutorial I've posted there to set it up and also grab the the project file that we've set up here. Thanks for checking this out. I know there's not a lot of great Octane for Houdini content out there, so I'm I'm learning it and so I'm trying to produce some of that as well so that uh, we can get more people on board. So thank you for for being here.